When I was just a boy about five or six years old, I had a best friend named Ben. He was a pretty smart kid who was just a couple of years older than I was. One Sunday evening, I was at Ben's house sitting with him on the stairs. He brought out a brand new guitar for me to see. I was blown away. I had never seen a guitar made for kids before. It was absolutely beautiful. Obviously, I did not know how to play, neither did Ben. As we took turns strumming away on the coveted little instrument, Ben began to complain of a headache. He took up his guitar and went upstairs to lay down. One week later, Ben was dead. I believe Ben had a brain tumor that required an immediate operation procedure, which he did not survive. Ben's was the first funeral service I ever attended, and it's something that I will never forget. I couldn't sleep for many nights after that. I remember seeing Ben's parents after the funeral. They came up to me and talked about how much I meant to Ben and that they knew how much we loved playing that guitar. One of Ben's family members even mentioned that Ben wanted me to have the guitar. They never gave it to me. A lady from the church saw my disappointment on not getting that guitar, so she came up to me to console me. She promised that she was going to buy me a guitar just like it, if not better. So so the next Sunday, I eagerly anticipated church just to receive my new guitar that that lady promised me. When her car pulled in, my heart pounded away in my little chest as I struggled to contain my excitement. She came out of her car and her hands were empty. Maybe it's in the trunk, I thought. It wasn't. Maybe she forgot it home. The next service, I waited again, only to be disappointed all over again. That gut-wrenching disappointment caught me over and over and over again as my little naive mind expected her to keep her word. She never did. I never got that guitar. At six years old, I learned that there could be relief or disappointment that result from the words that we speak. How many times have we spoken words to people that bear no fruit? The Lord Jesus declared in Matthew 12 and 36, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. The word idle in that scripture means barren. How many barren words have you spoken? How many broken promises lay in the wake of your passing? Have you given words to people that they've set their hearts on only to have it fade away as an unseen dewdrop? Do not speak unless you are ready to complete that which have breached the threshold of your parting lips. When your words are synonymous with action and fruit, they produce expectation. 2 Peter 1, 5-8 tells us, And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they may you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The barrenness of your words reflects the emptiness of your professed faith. The correlation between your words and the things you do are a pretty good indication of who you are as a person and as a Christian. If you think that I'm placing too much emphasis on the words we speak, then remember the Lord was explicit when saying in Matthew 12 and 37, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. How many words have you spoken that produced no fruit, lifeless promises stated in a moment of intention but soon after forgotten? Are these not barren words? The words we speak produce hope and expectation and if not kept, leads to inevitable disappointment. These will expose you to be a liar. There must be congruity between what you say and what you do. Idle words are not merely words spoken when idle, but words spoken that bear no action, produces no fruit. The lady lied to me because she never kept her promise by getting me a guitar. Years later, she walked away from Christ. I guess her idle words were a reflection of what was already in her. What do your words produce? Now think about that.